Welcome everybody to another edition of Combo for Bishop. The segment of, which is Bad for Bishop, we are back. Uh, last year we didn't have it, but this year, 2023, we are here. And we're actually here with none other than one of the greatest, um, a person that is has been killing the market when it comes to artistry of art, uh, mystified freaking Eurises and, and Maybachs and, and freaking D-Wagons, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, to work with people from DJ Khaled to Drake. Uh, can I mention the other people that you're about to work with or no? You can't? No? I could, you know, Kim K, he's about to do that one too. Uh, Travis Sky, he's worked with UFC fighters, uh, you know, and he is a person that is not even 30 yet. That's the crazy part. Um, Mr. Arts Lanta. So, thank you for having me. My oh, man, thank you for opening your house, bro. Yeah, funny. man. Uh, so, from a scale of 1 to 10, how are you feeling? You cannot use 7. How from, scale, from a I'm scale always to, on 10. Always on 10. I'm always on 10. Always on 10. So, how, how are you a person? How are you always on 10? What do you do as far as, before you actually really get into it, yeah. you know, like obviously mindset is everything. But, mm -hmm. like, how are you a person? And how do you actually, you know, always stay alive, always stay vibrant, yeah. you know, because art is energy, Exactly. energy is art, mm -hmm. and you always have to be 110% before you even do art, so like, how do you keep, you know, that energy up to a 10 at all times? Because like, you know, first of all, like, I woke up today, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not everybody woke up today. I woke up today, I can breathe, I can see, I can hear, I can walk, I can talk. So that already alone is like, yo, I'm blessed, I'm, I'm on 10 already, mm -hmm. so. However my day goes, I know I'm already blessed. So it's like, if something happens in my day and it's just a small issue, you know what I'm saying? It's not a problem, you know what I'm saying? A problem is something that you can't solve. It's just, there's small issues that happen. So you should always be grateful, you know what I'm saying? So I'm always grateful, I'm always on 10, and I'm always happy. My energy is just, it's just so bright and vibrant, you know what I'm saying? No, man, definitely. I think that's one of the great things about you, man, is like the energy and like, that you actually put, um, cause when I look at your page, I can actually feel the energy yeah. through your page, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, before we even get into that, as far as like how you became Arlenta and like where you are right now, yeah. I always like to start with the beginning. But before we do that, mm -hmm. I cannot come to your place <laughs> with nothing. It would be empty handed. Hey, so I had to give you. Yo, <laughs> this only the best part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go. Yeah, man. So, sure. I had to give that to you, man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, oh, I gotta rock this. Interview. Oh man, are you rocking it now? Yeah. Oh, what? Oh man, I don't know if it's gonna be a good interview. Yeah. All right, so your name is Atlanta. So yeah. obviously you're from Atlanta, right? Yeah, Atlanta. So um, let's let's talk about before the situation with Drake, before the situation with DJ Khaled, because a lot of people want to know like how necessarily you got there yeah. and the steps that actually got you to where you are as far as like being like, you know, a great artist as well. Like I can't really count you as just a painter, I just call you an artist. Yeah. Because I think an artist is very nuanced. Yeah. An artist, uh, there's a spectrum to that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah man, please, the floor is yours, man. Like, yeah. let's, let's hear your story. Man, yeah, so, um, like my whole life, I grew up, I grew up dirt poor. My parents came from Nigeria, um, came out here, had to get two jobs, and like, my mom had eight kids. So, eight. Yeah, eight kids, and then I lost my father when I was five years old. So she had to take care of all the eight kids by herself. Um, I lived in a foster home, man, name it, like, lived in a studio apartment with all of my brothers and sisters. Imagine nine people in one How many brothers, how many sisters? Like, where, where were you at? Five brothers and uh, two sisters, okay. and I, I am the third youngest. Okay, okay. So there's five older than me. Okay. Yeah, and like, all of us, man, like, we grew up in poverty and like, that's, that's what I feel like made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. If I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be as hungry as I am today. So I'm thankful for that, because that made me want to get it, made me hungry, made me want to strive. So my whole life got bullied in elementary school, middle school, and then when high school came, that's when I started to grow up. I started to hustle, I used to sell shoes. Like, I never had a job in my life. Really? Yeah. Never? Never, ever had a job in my okay, life. Okay, well, I was always hustling. Me and Nigeria, you know, they're always, you know, they always hustling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always hustling, yeah. sold shoes, sold something, did something, sold uh. shoes. And that's why I was in high school, so I was able to afford like new Jordans and like sneakers. So in the air, I was like, damn, you the first year in high school. So, and then I got best dressed twice, and I did that all on my own. And then 12th grade, 12th grade came, and I'm like, yo, I don't want to fucking go to college. So I dropped out of high school in 12th grade. I could have graduated, but I was like, fuck that. I'm going to go chase my dreams because 
I felt like college was a for me. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was like, yo, I wanted to go do music. Mm -hmm. And I was only doing music, I didn't even do art yet. Really? Yeah. So you actually started with music before you actually did art? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. talk about that. Like. Yeah, so yeah, I was doing music in the garage with my friends and the basements and shit. And then I dropped out and I moved to LA and then uh, I met my bro. I used to be in a group called Wave Pop. Okay. And then I met my bro, Great, and we became a duo uh, called Wave Pop. And then um, we just like hustling, hustling. I went to LA, I didn't know nobody. I just met my dad and so I was sleeping on the street, I hop, in and out, like didn't know nobody. I didn't give a really? fuck because I was like, yo, I'm gonna chase the shit. I know what's gonna happen, I'm gonna chase my dream. So I went out there and I met him. And then we just started making music every day, every day. And we became a group. And then like we went to Coachella and snuck on stage at Drake's party to perform. This was in 2017. Oh, wait, 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 okay, wait. Yeah, so this, this is the part that I don't know. Because yeah. I know, so you've actually stuck into two, two Drake two parties. Drake parties. <laughs> yeah. You don't even know about this. Okay, no, let's, let's get into that. Because, yeah. okay, talk about that Drake. Yeah. Yeah, talk about the Drake concert. Yeah, so we snuck, we snuck on stage, mind you. There's fucking Rihanna right there in, in the crowd, ASAP Rocky, the Migos, everybody, Kylie Jenner, everybody's there. So we uh, sneak on stage and then, and Virgil was DJing. Virgil Alvin was rest DJing. Peace, yeah. yeah, rest in peace, Virgil. Virgil DJing. We're like, yo, play the song. He was like, yo, play the song. And he's like, all right, I got you, got you. So he doesn't play the song. And then his set is over, and then his new DJ came that my brother knew. He's like, yo, you from Houston? Yeah, I'm from Houston too. So he's like, yo, play the song. He's like, all right, I got you. So we go to the sound engineer guy, and we're like, yo, can we see the microphone? And they gave us the microphone. We put him in our back pocket. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as he plays our song, we run up on stage. Yo, what's good? It's Wayne Pop. Yo, yo, he played the song. We start performing. Everybody's like, "What the fuck? Who is this?" Yeah, you ain't even supposed to be on there. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like at the time, he was eighteen. I was twenty. Okay. At the time, so yeah. Like you, these kids, like you know, we rock the stage though. And then after that, like yo, we got sponsored by this uh, this uh, marijuana company. This when I used to smoke weed, marijuana. Cause they gave us like three pounds. Mm -hmm. and, like yo, next time you come, bro, hit us up, perform, like. And then after that, like, yo, how did you not get kicked out? Like, what, what, what like, like that, that was like, honestly, God's topic right there. Yeah. Like, anybody else would have done that shit. I know. Would have right. been like, yo, get this. No, yeah, it was <laughs> like, the way we carried ourselves, like, we, we acted like we were supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. that's the difference. And when you have that confidence, nobody can tell you nothing. And that's how I move with everything I do. And that's why I've become so successful, because that's, you got to move with confidence, you know, for that. So where, so, you know, you said you were, you were, uh, one of eight, mm -hmm. um, your, your mother, you know, did a fantastic job, obviously, as yeah. far as raising you, definitely raising your kid, um, and having that confidence, mm -hmm. you gotta have that confidence when it comes to being an artist, because everybody in your mom was an artist, yeah. everybody does that, so how you're able to, like, really, really separate yourself from the pack, mm -hmm. so, like, where, the, like, where specifically does that confidence come from, and where do you draw that confidence from? I mean, honestly, like, I feel like I was born with it. Like, okay, talk about Ever it. since, like, like, even when I got bullied in elementary school, I didn't even give a fuck. I was like, yo, I don't care. Like, I just always believed that I was going to be a star and I was meant for something big. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you got, it just, it just has to be inside of you. And you got to just search for that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, I feel like it's in everybody, but you got to just find it in you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I found it in me and I just kept it with me my whole life. Because you know? the environment is definitely everything. So do you think that you, your siblings also played a huge role in that too? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my older brother it. definitely inspired me. Okay, sure. okay. Like, talk about that. Talk yeah. about your inspiration like, with your older brother. Like how did that impact you? Yeah, my older brother, because he, he was the reason why I started music, because he was a producer. So he produced, I used to watch him produce. And I started producing at like 10 years old, mm -hmm. making beats on the, the first Mac that ever came out, mm -hmm. making beats on that. And then that inspired me, like, you know, I want to do this music shit. I, and I appreciate that for him, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's dope, man, yeah. that's dope. Um, so we're in LA, mm -hmm. you're you know, moving to Shaken. Mm -hmm. Where did you do, where does you doing the arts, this, yeah. this phenomenal <laughs> shit that we see right here, you know what I'm saying? Where did that come from? Because I'm thinking, this, this is my brain. Yeah. You started with the art, right? Which I thought so, because I looked at, I did, your, I did my research, and I'm like, okay, like, where did your music come beforehand? Yeah. But now I'm hearing the music came beforehand. Yeah. So like, now let's get into the arts. Mm -hmm. Where exactly did that inspiration, as far as you starting as an artist, yeah. as far as doing it as a, what do you consider yourself when it comes to the realm? Because I don't want to talk in a term. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a painter within the artistry? Like, what exactly do you? Just a creator. A creator, yeah. okay, okay. So a visual creator, let's just do yeah. that, right? Okay, so. When you started, right, where did, where did that come from? Like, 
when did you start that? The it's visual crazy. creation. It's crazy. Cause like, I mean, I always knew how to draw since I was a kid, mm -hmm. but like, I never painted ever in my life. And so, I thank God for COVID because when COVID happened and the pandemic, I was at home bored as fuck. And I'm like, yo, I want to go explore all the town. So then I go to the art store and I get the canvas and I paint, get paintbrush, I come back, I start painting. And then all my friends are like, what, you did this, bro? I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, yo, you should take this series, bro. You're so fucking good. Like, you can make a lot of money. So I'm like, hmm, they might be right. Then I started taking it serious and I started, I paint, I'm starting to paint 10 paintings a day, 10 paintings a day. I'm messaging 100, 100 people a day on Instagram, I'm like, yo, yo, uh, buy a custom piece for me, buy a custom piece for me. And then I started to gain traction like that, and then I started, that's how I started to make some money. And then, but I was, at the time, I was only selling my paintings for $250. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, 250 here, 250 So, but I was selling a lot of paintings, so it would add up, add up, add up. What kind of paintings were you doing? When like you were portraits, doing like, portraits, okay. Yeah, I do portraits. Because I saw, because like when I was looking at it in your, your past, in your, uh, mm -hmm. your, your Instagram, um, you did paintings, uh, uh, recipes, uh, um, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. Um, Nipsey to Kobe. Yeah. Yeah, like, you did all them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. so yeah, I was doing like custom portraits of people. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how, that was like my little hustle of getting money at the time when I first started because music really don't make you money unless you're like super famous. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and that's what I was doing. And then, um, so one day that my homie calls me, he's like, yo, Drake's having his birthday party, you should paint him in the sun. The infinite story, yes. <laughs> it is an honor to hear the story on my freaking yeah. show. Please go ahead, please yeah. go ahead. Yeah. And then he calls me like, yo, Drake's having a party, you should paint him in the sun. And I'm like, oh shit, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, but the party was the next day, so I had like, and then he called me at nighttime. So I had like fucking six hours to paint it so I can resonate, so it can dry. Oh, that part I don't know. Because yeah. you, so you had less than a day to actually come out with a, art piece mm -hmm. that was appropriate yeah. for Drake because yeah. you gotta come correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did it. How was that pressure? Let's talk about that. Like, like when you were actually doing that, right? From the moment that you found out that Drake was happening in your party, mm -hmm. having the party the next day versus you like, okay, I have to make sure that this has to be the best fucking piece yeah. of my life. Mm -hmm. How was that pressure? It, I, honestly, did you feel I it? didn't even feel the pressure. I didn't even think about it. When he said Drake's having a party paying the sun, I said, bet. And I just did it. I just went like and just I just tapped in and went in this mode and mm -hmm. everything blacked out and I just just tapped in the painting and I and I killed it in, in six hours. How did you get into that mode though? It just it happens when I get inspired because I was okay. like, damn, I have an opportunity. Cause at the time I was broke as shit. Like I didn't have nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, I have an opportunity for Drake to be one of my collective. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, yo, fuck it, I'm gonna either go I'm going all in and I just I just did it, bro. There is a uh, with you, what I'm realizing, and I definitely want you to continue the Drake story real quick, but I do think with you is that the beautiful thing about you is that you don't have a scarcity mindset. Yeah. You have a, an abundance yeah, mindset. Of course. And I think that is the biggest mindset that not only artists should have, yeah. but everybody, everybody should have mm -hmm. when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Yeah, when it, comes yeah. to, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. You have a corporate job, yeah. you're just a mom. Exactly. It's, it's abundance. Mm -hmm. so, um, Black doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. Exist. yeah, definitely. All right, so continue. Continue the story. Yeah, so. Um, so I paint the painting in six hours, and then the party, the next day comes. I pull up I pull up to the party before the party starts, so it's not commotion. I get in, like, there's no line outside. But the party's at, like, a little warehouse in L.A. So I pull up, uh, there's already security at the door, so it's, I pull up. This, mind you, the painting's, like, taller than me, like, 6'3", mm -hmm. like, painting mm -hmm. tall as fuck. I bring the painting, and then the security's like, what the fuck you doing with this big-ass painting? <laughs> And I'm like, oh shit. And I didn't even come up, I didn't even think I had to come up with this. Oh, so you, you didn't even have like a game plan. Yeah. To talk to the studio. Yeah. Like, I was just, just going in there. Yeah. Like, I was like, like, let's go. Like, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, Drake's dad told me to surprise him. And they're like, oh, okay, all right, come on, come on, let's go. So they, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. they couldn't say no. Yeah. Like, right. Drake's yeah. dad told me to surprise him. They fucked up. So, yeah. so they let me back to the green room uh, where Drake was going to be at. I put the painting back there. I was like, all right, I'm going to go home. Uh, come back when the party start. And I come back around like 11, 30, 12, the party jumping. Fat ass line outside. So I'm like, fuck the line. I skipped the line, I went to the front door. The security remembers me. They're like, oh, let him through, let him through. So they escorted me back there, back to the green room, like I'm a celebrity at the time. So they escorted me, everybody's like, who's this, who's this? They walk me back to the green room. I walk in there, I see Drake and I see the I'm like, oh shit. And then I'm like, yo, I'm the one that did that. He looks at him. Now you did that? I was like, yeah. And he's like, nah. I was like, yeah, bro. And he's like, bro, I fucking love it, bro. And like, 
after that day, bro, like, that's when my heart just, like, psh, and everybody seen that happen, and then everybody, that's when DJ Khaled, and then all these fucking celebrities just hit me up, 6 9 me up, wouldn't pay on his car, just from that moment. Man. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so, all of this that was happening mm -hmm. with your name, I'm thinking that, because you didn't even have the Heartland name back then, yeah, right? Yeah, I didn't. So, um, Let's get into like the birth of Atlanta because mm -hmm. when I'm actually listening to your story, I'm like, okay, well, this actually happened in LA. Yeah. So if you actually have like a breakthrough moment with Drake, mm -hmm. maybe you should call yourself Art LA. <laughs> 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 like, you know what I'm saying? But now you have you call yourself Art Atlanta. Yeah. So talk about that. Yeah. As far as like what was the inception of Art Atlanta? Yeah, so this is it's crazy because um I was going through a tough time in my life and this is what I was like smoking every day, drinking every day, I was partying every day, was like not really caring about my well-being. And then one day I got so high and I was like, bro, I want to change my life. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to change my name. Because my name is Lana. And then, and that's when I started doing art and I was like, yo, I want to change my name. Oh, okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay, I just got chills. <laughs> Your name is Lanta. Yeah, Lanta. So, it... That's disgusting. That's that's his manifest destiny yeah. right there mm -hmm. because you're from Atlanta, yeah. but then it's like Art Atlanta. Yeah. Your name is like Jesus yeah, yeah, bro. Christ, bro. It's, it's bro, I'm like, okay, give me a moment. Because I, know <laughs> that, I, I always, it's crazy because it's like kind of maybe connect with you. Yeah. Is that like my last name is Bishop, mm. but then also my my company name is called Bishop Executive Services. Mm. So the Bishop, you ever play chess? Yeah. Bishop is one of the most important pieces mm -hmm. exactly. in chess because it takes care and satisfies the kings and queens' yeah. needs and desires. Mm -hmm. The same thing with my concierge company. Wow. I am the bishop, the king and queen are my clients. Wow. So I take care. So it's like, I, like, yeah, bro. So wow. I just had a, yeah. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So I see, like, the connection with that, yeah. man. So, like, um, so when you were saying that you were having a hard time, like, what exactly was happening to you behind my eyes? Well, I was having a hard time. Yeah. Like, um, Before you actually had the inception of Atlanta. Or, oh, or Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I was just going through, like, just, like, not giving a fuck. Like, I wasn't working out, eating unhealthy, mm -hmm. smoking. What year was this? This was 2020, beginning of 2020. Okay. Like, right before COVID, because mm -hmm. COVID happened in March of 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, like, in 2020. And then March came, and that's when I was, like, I stopped everything. I cold turkey, stopped smoking weed, all that shit. And then that's when the epiphany came. I was, like, yo, I'm changing my name to Art Lana. What was the name before? It was just Latin. It was Latin. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Mm -hmm. So did that with that epiphany that you had as far as like changing your mindset back into because back then maybe you had like a little bit of a, a, a of, of an episode of scarcity, but you went back into abundance as far as remembering who the fuck you were. Yeah. Did you move to Atlanta? Back to Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Like what? What, what was? What, okay, no, I what never. Was I never went back. To you never went back to Atlanta. Yeah. So when you came from LA, like let's let's start. Let's go. Let's continue from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I never went back to LA. I was in LA okay. the whole time. I was in LA for six years, almost seven years. I just came to Miami two years ago, almost two years now. So been in Miami for almost two years, but yeah, I was in LA at the time and like uh, and at this time like I just started like tapping into like manifestation and all that. Like I was writing my notebook every day, like manifesting where I'm gonna be, writing down every day, every single day, going to the gym, waking up at five AM, writing my notebook, go work out, boom boom, eat healthy. Repeat, repeat, repeat every single day. Every single the day. Consistency definitely yeah. helps you out to get yeah. you back into that mode of mm -hmm. abundance, right? Exactly. And that's when like all of all of my whole life, everything, all this you see, bro, I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Everything you see right now in my life, I wrote it down and it happened. Yeah. And like and that and that was at that time when I was at my lowest point. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about let's just stay with manifestation mm -hmm. real quick because I I have the saying yeah. that Manifestation does not work unless you do. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, some of them are women, but also men too, whatever, they just think that they can just sit back and be yeah. like, yes, I am abundant. Yeah, yes, exactly. Like but you're not fucking putting the damn work. Yeah, you got it. You're not, you're not, you're like, like writing down mm -hmm. your affirmations and actually believing it and actually doing the work towards that goal mm -hmm. What is what really, really helps you. Yes. It's like, it's, it's not, just if you have a if you have a plan from A to Z to do what you need to do, it's not just A, it's not just B, mm -hmm. it's not just C. Yeah. It's every single letter for exactly. you to check off. Exactly. You know? And I think a lot of like, and especially with like social media right now, mm -hmm. they think because like, you know, oh man, like 
our lands are like, you know, he just got popping like that, but they don't understand no, that. Like, they don't know what all this They have no about. idea. Like, we just went through it. Like, yeah. years and years mm-hmm. of, like, just changing your mindset, mm-hmm. taking chances as well, too. Yeah. Because, you know, not only that she snuck into a Drake situation once, but mm-hmm. twice. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it takes you to have that mindset to actually take those chances as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, 100%. Do you think, like, so... With that being said, so you moved to, so okay, so we're into 2020, mm-hmm. uh, pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's talk about that, because I know what I was like doing my research is that, like, you know, you were also going through as far as like selling your paintings for a little bit, but then also selling your paintings for like hundreds of thousands yeah, of dollars, right? Exactly. So let's, let's get into that process. Yeah, so like 2020, I was selling my painting for $200, and then 2021 came, and that's when I did the Drake, and then 2022, that's when I sold, uh, my highest piece so far that I sold probably like over 150k. 150k. Yeah. That's one piece. Okay. And like, and I'm like, yo, I really did that, and like, that's what, when, what was the piece? What was the piece? It was a, um, it was a fat ass mural in the center of the office. Fat ass mural in the office. That's for 150k. And that's when I'm like, damn, I used to sell my paintings for 250 dollars. I can really get this for my art. And that, like that, that was mine. And then, like, like mine, like I used to be homeless, bro. Mm-hmm. And like, I had bought a fucking in LA. I bought a ten thousand square foot mansion and shit. Elevator, movie theater. I'm like, yo, I really did this. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. bought my mom a house. I'm like, yo, I'm really like, it's really happening to me. So that's when I, the moment I realized, like, yo, it finally happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's no, crazy. No, definitely, man. Congrats on that. Yeah. So I do think that a lot of people like to know is the because uh, before we get into you uh painting a whole bunch of luxury shit which you know, we're gonna get into that mm-hmm. but like let's talk about the process of going from a to z with your paintings mm-hmm. um so if i'm a person that say, hey listen i got 100 bands i want you to make this piece of me like what is your process when it comes to that so yeah, the, I mean, I can go up any picture. Like, I'll okay. use a picture and then the painting is done. The painting is done? Yeah, the painting is done. Wait, wait, wait. It's not that simple, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I know you're nice, but it's not that simple. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? Because I made it that simple. Because, bro, I was painting 10 paintings a day for okay. a year straight. Okay, so that was the process of Yeah, yeah. That, I painted 3,000 paintings in one year. I have over 3,000 collectors, bro. I have almost 4,000 people that own my art. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I painted so many paintings. Now it's just like second nature for me. So when I go on the, on the canvas, I'm just, it's not the six hours that see, it's all those years that I put in that, that made it the six hours it takes to make the painting. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, I had to train myself mm-hmm. to become who I am. So do you think that when it comes to uh, artists that are struggling, mm-hmm. like, what do you think is like the biggest problem that they have? I know so many talented artists that cannot sell their work. And their oh, artists like dope because they don't, because you gotta know the business. Because at the end of the day, it's still a business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. gotta know sales. Mm-hmm. It's all sales. Mm-hmm. Everybody sells Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all sales and, and they don't know sales. So it's all sales, it's all marketing. And people are not even buying the art, they're buying the artist. You know what I'm saying? You are the brand. That's why Louis Vuitton, can sell shoes for 2,000, Nike sell shoes for 200. Because mm-hmm. they're buying the name, they're not buying the shoe. And the feeling too. Yeah, yeah. and the feeling, you know and what I'm saying? the emotion as well too. There's yeah. a lot of emotion when it comes to like exactly. the as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, what I wanted to get into real quick. Hold on, I had a question, but it fucking flipped me. Um, oh, so you talk about sales, you talk about business, you talk about branding. Mm-hmm. One, do you believe that within your process of your past, right? Selling shoes, sneakers, mm-hmm. clothing, whatever you can when you were like, you know, in high school. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that definitely gave you a leg up as far as knowing the business? Yeah. Because a lot of artists, they only know the creativity mm-hmm. side, but not the business exactly. side. Exactly, yeah, that definitely helped. So yeah, so talk about, talk about that as far as like, you know, like the business side when it comes to, you know, artistry. Yeah, so like the business side when it comes to art, First of all, you just have to know your worth, you know what I'm saying? Know how much you want to sell your paintings for and know how much time you're putting in because your time is your most valuable asset. And that's why I don't do like canvas work that much anymore mm-hmm. because that takes more time. That's why I like the cars because the cars, they don't take me as much time and I get 
paid a lot of money to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's like I value my time over anything because without my time, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I, they said I had 24 hours to live, and I'm like, damn, like, fuck all yeah. this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you gotta value your time. Mm-hmm. And what is your time worth? Yo, this, that's actually really beautiful because creating, like, that piece right there, mm-hmm. the mom's right? How long did that take you? That took me like three hours. Three hours, okay. Uh, the one with you right there? Uh, that one took me like six hours. Six hours, okay. Now, how long does it take you to do a luxury car? 30 minutes. Okay. Now, <laughs> now we're on to something. Yeah. So I do think that with you, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. is that you have mastered every single level when it comes to the time that it takes you to do an art, to do mm-hmm. an art piece, where you're doing it, mm-hmm. making it a spectacle. Mm-hmm. So you're actually like, am, am, I, am, I, get, am I getting yeah, somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're actually having a whole encompassing uh, umbrella of you see what I do. Mm-hmm. It takes 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Everybody sees it. Mm-hmm. I film it. Mm-hmm. And then other than you just doing a painting by yourself, mm-hmm. you're actually making the spectacle so everybody sees you. So you have the marketing, the branding, the sales, exactly. the business. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. get it, man. You get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like, I'm the only one that's doing what I'm doing. Like, the only one? Like the live painting of the car, like it's, it's performance. <laughs> and I'm in the, the art of the, the cars, mm-hmm. the art of it is the performance. Mm-hmm. That's what people come to see. Yeah. They come to see me in my zone fucking splattering the paint, seeing my energy just going crazy because yeah. it's, it's an experience. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the art line experience. But people don't realize that I can actually paint. They, every, I get hit every day. Oh my God, you have no talent. You're just throwing paint on cars. Well, now since we're here, mm-hmm. one of the biggest captions of one of your posts is that mm-hmm. you said that a person came up to you and was like, oh, my two-year-old can do it. And yeah. you're like, yeah, he probably can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, that right there, I already saw the type of mindset that you have. Yeah. Because how, uh, like, think about other artists that probably would be like, wait, what? You hating on me, man? Mm-hmm. Fuck you, this and that. Like, no, nah, bro. Like, maybe your two-year-old can. Yeah. But, it is, but he's not me, mm-hmm. and I'm not him. Yeah. You know? So, like, when it, com- when it comes to just having that mindset, having that belief of other people believing you as well, too, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, like, you say that your two can do it, but is he doing it? Exactly. He's not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, that, I just have to uh, yeah. like, highlight that. Yeah, that's like, true, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, they say they can do it, but they're not doing it. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So, um... So painting, so let's talk about the artline experience, right? Mm-hmm. So when it comes to like, you have a person who brings a yours, who brings a color in. Yeah. Um, is there any type of method or strategy on, cause there's always method to the madness. Yeah. Is there a method to the madness when it comes to you actually painting uh, like a, like a, like a, a yours versus a common, depending on what kind of color it is. Do you, yeah. do you lose, use different types of colors? Yeah, what yeah. kind of paint do you use? Yeah, yeah. When I think about yeah. it, I was like, okay, yeah, this shit is fire. Yeah. But like, if I was going to the car wash, yeah. it's over. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> okay, good. That's my, my bad, my bad, my bad. I was, that's, my, that's my biggest question to you, bro. Cause I'm like, bro, I gotta bring a color in. I'm yeah. like, yo, I want you to paint my shit. Yeah. But like, what kind of paint are you using? Because no. I don't wanna go there for the car wash. <laughs> Yo, everybody's <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm like, like it's it's over, like, like yeah. so. Talk to me about that. Now, yeah, of course, I use a certain paint <laughs> okay. that does not. The paint survives tsunamis. Okay. Like you, the right. car can go through a tsunami, and yeah. the paint still will be. Yeah. So it's about hurricanes. So it's a certain type of paint that I use. I do use certain colors on each car. That it depends on what color the car is. Okay. Right? So if the interior is orange and the, and the out exterior is gray, mm-hmm. then I'll put an orange splatter on the interior. So mm-hmm. I just make it all about color theory and I make the colors and like, and like even with um, I have a certain cup I have to use to make the, the technique of the splatter, mm-hmm. splatters mm-hmm. in a way, so. Does it spin cone with it too? Yeah, the 360 too. I'm like, damn, I'm going to Yo, each move I do, it comes uh-huh. with a different techniques. Like, yeah. And that's why. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know the last one that you did was was uh, a UFC fighter, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's his name? Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. He's yeah. the UFC champion. Yeah, the yeah. World, right now. yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, talk to me about that about, about yeah. experience. That's that was the most recent one. Dope. Yeah, like he just seen my shit. He said, "Yo, I love your work." And I'm mm-hmm. like, "Yo, let me splatter uh, your Lamborghini." Like mm-hmm. that. And then, cause we're on tour right now, so 
And we were already on the way to um, LA, so I was like, yo, let's just stop by Vegas. I'm gonna stop by Arizona, we're gonna go to Arizona. So we stopped by there, and we, we, had, we had a great time. He's a dope, mm-hmm. genuine dude, like, he's a champion, like, he's mm-hmm. so humble, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's pretty dope to see. Yeah, um, so one of the biggest things when it comes to business and artistry uh, is the foresight of doing collabs. Yeah. Collabs are very, very important because it definitely furthers not only the brand that you're actually working with, but also your brand too. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people, they get big headed because they think because if the brand that is not, uh, let's just say that, you know, the brand maybe be here, but mm-hmm. your brand is here. You never know because maybe that one person that that brand yeah. is focusing on, mm-hmm. that can actually get you to another level. Yeah. Um, Hence, uh, one of the biggest, you know, brands that I know of that mm-hmm. you actually worked with, you know, my boy, Rolling True, there, Roll, so, man. Roll, true. So, so that was a collab right there. Yeah. And um, the money in my eyes was not necessarily important, but maybe like furthering both of y'all brands respectively in y'all different lanes. Yeah, exactly. So give some advice when it comes to, to artists that to not necessarily always worry about the money, mm-hmm. but worry about the long haul yes. when it comes to collapse. Yes, don't, yeah. yeah, the work, the money is like, don't worry about the money, mm-hmm. the money is nothing. Like money's gonna come when you create dope shit, the money follows, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, it's not about the money for me, even like my events that I'm throwing, like I'm not even like really selling tickets to Arby's, it's mm-hmm. a free event for Arby's. Mm-hmm. So you come through, you know what I'm saying? Cause I want it to be more about the experience for the, the longevity, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So don't think about the money first, like even with the Drake situation for me, like I didn't charge him, I just gave him the pain. Yeah, exactly. And now that changed my life. Just, just, imagine, you know just imagine if you were actually worried about the money. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, by the way, here's the pain, but exactly. okay. Exactly. You might think, well, get the out of here. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Yeah. yeah, but so, you not worrying about the money has yeah. propelled you to where you're at right now. Exactly. But a lot of people don't really understand that because they're trying to pay bills, mm-hmm. they're trying to you know, feed their family, their yeah, kids. Exactly. Um, but uh, it's, 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 I think, what a lot of artists need to understand is, is that you know if you are focusing on your art it's not really making money mm-hmm. maybe you do need to get like a part time job yeah maybe you do need to kind of do something to make ends meet like, mm-hmm. now I'm talking about the more practical stuff yeah. you know um, you you had to do what you had to do in order to get where you're at you know exactly. what I'm saying so you were talking about briefly when it comes to art piece because yeah. you know Art Basel 2023, yeah. we're here. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, man, let's talk about Art Beast. Let's talk about that event, mm-hmm. uh, the preparation when it comes to that. Okay. Uh, I know you can't release who you got this yeah. year. Okay, I'm not gonna ask you. <laughs> I, I mean, I got you, we're on the same page. But um, yeah, man, like, what are your thoughts about Art Basel, Miami, Art Basel in general? Yeah. You know, talk about that. I mean, Art Basel, Art Basel is amazing. Art Basel, like the actual Art Basel festival where they host like, like Scope and all that and on the beach, and Red Dot. It's dope, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I, but I never did it because I believe in bringing my own crowd, mm-hmm. and bringing my people together and throwing my own events with my own energy. And I've done that in the past. This is my third year doing it. First year I did it, only like 10 people came. Last year I did it, over 2,000 people came. This year. This year. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what's the number? What was the projected number? I don't, yo, know, I, bro, I don't even know. Probably going to break the scale. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I'm doing two events this year. Okay. So the Artland Experience is December 8th. Mm-hmm. That event is going to be like a black tie event. You got to come suited up, dressed up, formal, you know what I'm saying? If you're not dressed up, you can't get in. Mm-hmm. So it's like gotcha. free food, like appetizers, free drinks, champagne. Gotcha. You know what you come through? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> Oh, VIP, I got you. I appreciate you that. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so like that's gonna be like a dope experience, been like high celebrity network clients. Everybody's gonna be there. That's December 8th. December 9th is gonna be the Art Beast Festival where I'm bringing, I have about 35 artists that's coming to showcase the work. And basically, what I'm doing, I'm building an art label. You know, music labels, they mm-hmm. sign the artists, the singers. Mm-hmm. I'm signing the painters, you know what I'm saying? Putting them on, giving them a platform to sell the art, giving them exposure, you know what I'm saying? And, and also teaching them too, right? Yeah. Because you also have a course that you are working yeah, on. Exactly. You have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right, got it, got it. Yeah, I got all that. So all that is built in one. That's what mm-hmm. Art Beast is, is mm-hmm. to, to build, because nobody's doing that for the art community. No, not at all. I can't think of nobody. Not, not, doing not to the capacity where you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, so like, yeah. nobody's really put, it's only the galleries, and guess what? The galleries are taking 50%. Gotta be. Crazy. I'm, I'm, not even gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna take 50%. Yeah. It's gonna be a way better percentage, yeah, and I'm helping them out, showing them how to brand themselves. And with your artists and then your your brand, you have way yeah. better yeah. 
exposure than exactly. anybody else. You know what, what I'm saying? saying. Yeah. So the only like, person that I think that probably be maybe well, well Peter Lick maybe, mm-hmm. but like other than that, bro, like yeah, bro, you care. But I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. No, I say yeah, that's what I'm doing, bro. So I'm I'm removing the old model of the galleries taking fifty percent. They gotta hold your work. But no, you keep your work. But I'm gonna help you sell it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying we're helping, we're giving you putting and we're building an app where. On the app, you can get, you know how you get paid from streams with music, mm-hmm. so you're gonna get paid from when people view your art. Dope. So it's gonna be like Dope. the same thing, I'm gonna digi- digitize the whole Dope. art game. So like, Dope. I'm working on that, it's a lot of stuff that I'm working on. When it, when it comes to Art Beast mm-hmm. and you selecting the 35 artists, mm-hmm. is there a method or some type of outline or some type of criteria that you follow to bring in? Because at the end of the day, yeah. here's the thing, you're definitely like, you're definitely putting yourself out, you're definitely paying it forward, but mm-hmm. you're also taking a chance as well, too, yeah. when it comes to collabing or like having other artists under you. Mm-hmm. So like they have to actually have a certain type of criteria. Yeah. So like if you could talk about that. Too. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. They got, I got to love the art, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I got to love the story, you know what I'm saying? It's not really mostly about the art, it's mostly about the person. Got it. Are got they it. hungry? Do they got really it. want it? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Are they serious? So that's what I look for, you know what I'm saying? Do they got the drive? Are they willing to do what it mm-hmm. takes? To become the next fucking biggest artist, mm-hmm. and so that's they, what I mean. they search you then. Like, do they come more to you, or yeah, do, you, yeah, yeah. do you come to yeah, them? Yeah, they hit me up every okay, day. Perfect. I got hundreds perfect. of artists hit me up every day. Yeah. So it's like, and then I, I appreciate that because they look at me like as their mentor. It's like, yo, I want to be just like you, man. Mm-hmm. And I like that's pretty crazy. You know yeah, what yeah. Have you? Uh, did you ever thought about being in a position where you were, like, you know, what I'm saying in 2012, 2013? Like yeah, <laughs> I, I, bro, I didn't even know I was gonna do art, bro. Yeah, because you were just doing music. Yeah, yeah, yeah I exactly. thought I was gonna be a musician. That's uh, it. I wanna make music that. Yeah, like, I didn't know I was gonna be who I am. Mm-hmm. It's, but it's yeah, all but, God's plan. But, but you know. uh, yeah, but our Basil art beast is definitely gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be there. Uh, that's the reason why we're doing Basil and Bishop too to yeah. also highlight you and also mm-hmm. give you your flowers. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, from a black man to a black man, you know, being in business. Because uh, in my business in concierge. Uh, I am definitely the minority when it comes yeah. to, you know, the type of service that I do, you, you already know. Yeah. So, um, since we're there, let's just let's talk about that real quick, you know. Um, I honestly only, as far as with you, as far as like with your status, who you are, the only black male artist, as far as like in Miami, mm-hmm. you know, and that's definitely some honor and that's definitely, yeah. you know, a tribute, honestly, to you mm-hmm. and definitely wanted to give you your flowers on that. Appreciate that. You know, Thank so, you. um, does that ever cross your mind? No, that like now that you say it, I'm yeah. Like, think about it, like, like yeah, bro. That's really crazy. I don't know anybody else. Mm-hmm. But do you do you do you think about that? Do you like you know? Because uh, with our people, sometimes you know we we, we can be you know uh, enemies to mm-hmm. us all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, with me, I never look at race when it comes to this because yeah. I am. A strong black, six foot eleven, three twenty one. Six eleven. Six eleven. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Crazy. Yes, sir. Six eleven, bro. And uh, you know, I I stand proud that yeah. I am a that type of stature, mm-hmm. and that actually separates myself from the pack. Yeah. Where like, people trust me with their money, with their mm-hmm. lives. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? With like you know that whole itinerary. Thing. Yeah. So. Um, that's what's up, you know, but do you do you ever think about that though? As far as like, damn, you know what? Like, I'm definitely like one of the only black males here in this space. Like, you know, yeah. does that ever cross your mind? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has it actually has. Uh-huh. I think I'm like, like, yo, like, it's really crazy. Bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and I believe that I'm gonna be like one of the greatest artists to ever lived. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Then, and when I think of that, it's like, damn. But even though you are of the minority, mm-hmm. you having that mindset and having that manifestation too, mm-hmm. for you being the greatest. Very, very paramount, paramount mm-hmm. to make sure that you also succeed. Yes. Because, you know, you can have other people, especially depending on, you know, who you grew up with, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I know your family definitely supported you, mm-hmm. but that's very, very rare as well. Yeah. You know, you can have family, you can have friends, mm-hmm. you can have other, you know, constituents or whatever that like, man, I mean, honestly, you probably should just stick to me, yeah. bro. Don't do art, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But then also, too, it's like, no, if I didn't. If I just would have stuck to music, mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't be able to circle back to music yeah. where I'm at now. Exactly. Because the music you started with, mm-hmm. you started with the art, now the art got you to a certain place, mm-hmm. a certain status, where you can go back to, to yeah. the music mm-hmm. and just yep. exactly. make it together. Yeah. I, I, I did my research yeah. on you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the music because I think the music is very, very important 
within our bats as well because yeah. it goes hand in hand. So Leah, let's let's talk about your inspiration. Talk yeah. about like you know like you also work with Six Nine as well, which is huge. Yeah. You know, uh, art other artists as well. So mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, the music man. I love music. Like music right now, personal. So like 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 I said, I was in a group called Wave Pop. We did millions of streams. We done collabs with. Loud Luxury, I don't know if you heard Loud Luxury. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. We had a song with them that has like 20 million streams. We did Coachella, we performed, uh, we, we was on tour, did all that. But now I'm dropping solo music, mm -hmm. just me, myself. And like just yesterday, like we had a, a conference meeting. I can't say too much, but okay. um, some big things coming on the way with the music side. You know right. what I'm saying? So uh, that's going to really help push the music because I have my art team that helped me build a team. So we can't really focus on the music and art at the same time because yeah. it's like too much. Yeah, you know too, even though it's relatable, but yeah. it's two different lanes. Yeah, exactly. It's two different approaches, mm -hmm. market-wise and everything else. Yeah. But you can mix it a little bit. So yeah. like, how do you mix it? You know, like, yeah. you know, like. Yeah, the, the only way you can mix it is by just building a bigger team. That's what I'm mm. doing. I'm big, okay. adding more people to the team to help me. But I'm still the visionary, still foreseeing everything. I'm still the artist creating mm -hmm. the music. Mm -hmm. I want this here, I want this here, I want this to look like this. So I'm still the visionary, but I need people to help me structure it. Like, yo, know, put this, in, like, this is gonna be here, this, how much money we're gonna put in this, that, that. Gotcha, like, gotcha. That's what exactly what we're working on right now. Yeah, no, that's definitely. Mm -hmm. um, the newest, because you do have a new song, right? That's more like Afrobeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just fire. yeah oh, you it's heard that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I heard it actually, I think, one of your stories, and I was like, damn, all right, there we go. I was about like, to hit you up in Atlanta. I need that. I need that, I need that private. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? I need a private file real quick. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not how you go. No, no, it's not out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Um, what do you, what do you like, what do you uh, uh, lean towards more? Do you lean towards more like the pop style? Mm -hmm. Do you lean more towards the Afrobeat? Like, what is your. Yeah. Yeah. You can't say everything. You can't no, say no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's really, my heart goes with the Afrobeat because I'm Nigerian. Of course. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, Afrobeat is really me. So, the Afrobeat is what I'm being towards to. So, once the Afrobeat blows up, then I can be, mm -hmm. I can do this, that, that. Because I can do everything. I can rap, sing, pop, Afrobeat. So, mm -hmm. it's like, I can do everything. So, the Afrobeat, though, is, and Afrobeat is hot right now. Mm -hmm. So, it just yeah. makes sense yeah. to me yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, all right, this has definitely been amazing. I Thank appreciate you. you. I have one more question. I have two more questions before we actually wrap yeah. up. So, um, when it comes to people who want to be in your position, who people who look up to you, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing the work. You're definitely doing, you know, paying it forward, for making art beasts. Mm -hmm. um, what type of advice would you give up and coming artists to really focus on to try to be as, as successful as you are? Man, so all I say, if you're watching this. Keep greatness around you. Like your circle, you are who the five people you hang around with. So keep your circle tight. Keep positive people around you. Don't keep negative people around you that tell you no. Keep people that uplift you. Like, yeah, you can do that. Do that. Do that. Because that's really the most important thing. And also, you got to be focused. Cut out all the distractions out of your life. If you're not focused, you're not going to accomplish anything. You know, you're going to keep getting distracted. You're going to procrastinate. You're going to just leave that for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave tomorrow to today's work for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And just keep your mindset in, in a row, you know what I'm saying? If you're not eating healthy, go try to eat healthy. If you're not working out every day, go try to work out. Get your body because strong body, strong mind, you know what I'm saying? So keep that in place and just know what you really want. Know what you want to do in life and be clear with it. Write it down. Vision it. Dream about it and it will happen. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And do the work. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that wisdom. All right, so I have a last segment that is called The Last Call. Mm -hmm. so you know, I'm in hospitality, I'm in nightlife. Yeah. So I'm going to give you uh, a bevy of words that uh, has to do with you, and mm -hmm. I want the first thought that comes to your mind. Okay. okay? Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes. Your heritage. Your, yeah. Your, yeah. yeah. What, what is your first thought when you think about that? Think about Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Just. Like my roots, like my my family, my people, the the amazing music, like the culture, got it, everything. Okay, you know okay, okay. Uh, L. A. L. A. Soulless. Oh, this time. My bad. That was funny. No, for real. You. Yeah. Okay, L. A. Um, let's see here. Your first piece that you've ever made. Wow, um, it was a piece of my logo. It was it was my logo. I spray painted my logo. First piece. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Drake. Drake. Genuine. DJ Khaled. Genuine. Funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sugar Sean. Oh, it's fucking cool as shit. Yeah. 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 He's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Six nine. Six nine. Six nine. Lit. Lit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. Music. Music. My first love. Okay, okay. Uh, Art Basel. Art Basel. Best time of the year. Art Beast. Fucking. Ooh, that's a hard one. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go so ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Your first three things yeah. that, that come to mind. Uh, I know, I know, I know it's, that's a little bit of a spectrum. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, Art Beast. My team. Art Beast. Shane, shout out to Shane. Shout out to TJ. My fucking brothers. And they're amazing. The Art Land Experience. The best experience that mm. you would ever experience in your whole life. Cool. And the last one, Atlanta. 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 I move with love, positivity. I move with belief. I want people to have hope. And I'm just that person you look at to. I want to inspire people. Oh, man. Nice, man. Arlena, I uh, what I definitely learned a lot about you. I had no idea what your actual name was, Lanza. Because it's funny, I was like, you know, should I ask you what your real name is? Like, you know, so I was like, nah, don't worry. Yeah. That's my real name. Your real name is Lanza. That's yeah. pretty dope. Yeah. I appreciate your time, yeah. your energy. Thank you so thank much you for me. opening up your house to me, man. From a man to man, like, thank you so much for everything. Uh, not that you need it, but you know, like, let's get some, let's get some shameless plugs going. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, where people can find you, okay. where people can find your, uh, yeah. your 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 event too, and and, and art beats and, and art basil. Floor is yours. Yeah, man. Uh, all social media platforms, Artlanta underscore underscore, Art Beast and Art Basel and Artlanta Experience. The link is in my bio on my Instagram, so just go click on that, get your tickets. It's going to be a movie. Actually, it's sold out. You can't even get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Next year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if, you know the, if you know the people, you can't get it, but honestly, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Hey, all right, man. I appreciate you, bro. Right, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, good, man.